So if we look at this, okay, we're talking about the trigonometric functions, and we should definitely recognize sine, cosine tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. And um, in previous years, we've really focused on looking at the triangles. And guess what? That's what we're going to do next class. Okay, but today I just want to um, give us another option of finding trigonometric ratios. And for some of you, you might like this way way better than using triangles. Okay, others of you might like triangles better, and that's great. Um, I personally like the triangles better, but I think that if you are someone that is just really good at memorization, um, this could be a cool method for you. Quite honestly, we know we need to memorize whatever method we use. Um, but I will say that we're going to use this particular method when we are dealing with all of the quadrantals. So even if you're going through this going, this is dumb, I just want to make a triangle, that's fine. But know that there is a reason we are learning this, and we are definitely going to do that with our quadrantal values. So I'm going to kind of zoom in here. So it says let t be a real number. So t, we know it's always, we need a, an angle connected to our sine or trig, whatever trig function we're dealing with. So t represents our angle here. And let x, y be the point on the unit circle corresponding to t. So basically, instead of memorizing all these values, what we're going to memorize is that sine is the y value of the ordered pair. Cosine is the x value of the ordered pair. Tan is y divided by x. And we know that cotangent, secant, and cosecant are all reciprocal values. So I'm just going to make a note here, like on cosecant, y cannot be equal to 0. On secant, x cannot be equal to 0. And on cotangent, y cannot be equal to 0. For tangent, x cannot be equal to 0. So that just gives us a little idea of our restraints here. Now, some of you guys might be wondering why this actually works. And um, the reason is, we know in a unit circle, our radius is 1. So if I go ahead and look at a unit circle here, kind of a rough circle, but that's OK. Um, let's call this x, y. And this angle right here is T. I'm actually going to zoom in even more here for this. We know that this length right here is our radius. And on a unit circle, I know my radius is 1. OK, if I draw straight down, I notice this forms a right triangle. This is our X value. And this would be our Y value, because I know that's telling me how far over I'm going, how far up I'm going. So based on things that we've previously learned, I know sine of an angle, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Notice I would get y over 1, or sine is equal to y. OK, for cosine, I know cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so I would get x over 1. So the cosine is equal to the x value. For tangent, I would do y over x, so I would get y, just y over x in this case. And if we look, those are all the values that we get. So mathematically, that's why it works. Okay, We just need to somehow memorize um, that sine goes with y, and that's going to be like a relationship that we see again and again and again. Okay, And this is super dorky, and it probably won't make sense to half of you. But the way I remember is that the vowel sound in sine kind of sounds like y, sine, y. I don't know. It's dumb. But think of something dumb like that that will help you remember it, and you'll be in good shape. So for today's notes, today's notes are going to seem really easy because I'm giving us all of these ordered pairs. But I just want to point out a few things to you, OK? with all of our quadrantal values. If we look, if we start here, we know that the radius is 1, so that ordered pair is 1, 0, because I'm going to the right one and I'm not moving up or down. 0, 1 means I'm just going straight up 1. Negative 1, 0 means I'm going to the left one. 
0, negative 1 means I'm going down 1. If we look at these ordered pairs, these are the three ordered pairs that I need to have memorized. Okay, pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2, 1 half. Pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2, radical 2 over 2. Pi over 3 is 1 half, radical 3 over 2. And honestly, guys, if I know these three, if we look, all the ones in quadrant 2, everything that has a denominator of 3 has the same ordered pair. I can even move here to quadrant 3 or quadrant 4. The only difference is the direction. So I know if I'm going left and down, both of those values should be negative. If I'm going to the right and down, the x should be positive, the y should be negative. Okay, so we really just need to memorize these three ordered pairs and the quadrantal ones, obviously. Um, but if I know these three and I can memorize um, direction, then we're in good shape. So today's going to seem super easy because we have those values in front of us. It gets a little bit tougher when we have to have them memorized. So number one says t equals pi over 6. So first thing I'm going to do, if we look on our graph here, pi over 6 has an ordered pair of radical 3 over 2, 1 half. So I'm just going to go ahead and write radical 3 over 2, 1 half, just to remind me what I'm doing. And I need to find all six trigonometric functions. So I'm going to start with finding sine, cosine, and tangent. Notice we never write one of those trig functions all by itself. We always need to have an angle after it. Okay, so sine of pi over 6, we said sine is the y value, so sine is 1 half. Cosine of pi over 6 is the x value, so it would be radical 3 over 2. Tangent of pi over 6 would be y over x, so let's just kind of think about this for a moment. If I did 1 half divided by radical 3 over 2, I would end up with 1 over radical 3, which we know is radical 3 over 3, because we need to rationalize that. We also could have gotten that if you just went ahead and, div and multiplied by the reciprocal. No, just kidding. We would get this regardless, but I know that we need to rationalize. Okay, so now working backwards here, cosecant we know is the reciprocal of sine. Cosecant would be the reciprocal of 1 half, which would be 2. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So I would get 2 over radical 3, which we know is 2 radical 3 over 3. And cotangent of pi over 6 is going to be the reciprocal of our tan value. So I just get radical 3. So once again, this is just based on memorization. We just need to have all those angles memorized. So number two, t equals 5 pi over 4. So if we look over here, the way that I personally think it's easiest to do it, I know that our ordered pair for pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2 radical 2 over 2. And I need to think, what quadrant is pi over 4 in? And that would be 1 and 1 fourth of a semicircle, so that's in quadrant 3. I know quadrant 3 is going to the left and it's going down, so it's going to be negative and negative. So, if I am going through this, I'm going to say the sine of 5 pi over 4 is equal to negative radical 2 over 2, because that is our y value. The cosine of 5 pi over 4 is going to be negative 2, I'm sorry, negative radical 2 over 2, because that is the x value. The tangent value of 5 pi over 4 is going to be y over x. When I put anything over itself, it is equal to 1. Cosecant of 5 pi over 4, the reciprocal of negative radical 2 over 2 is just negative radical 2. 
secant of 5 pi over 4 is negative radical 2, and cotangent of 5 pi over 4 is going to be the reciprocal of 1, which is 1. Okay, so once again, if I have these values memorized, it does not take me super long to do all of this. Okay, I want you guys to all put like a star or circle number three. This is the one that we are going to have to work with the most. Okay, quadrantal. I know pi is a semicircle. So if I'm thinking about what would this ordered pair be, obviously we can see it's negative one zero. But if I'm just using common sense, I know that means I'm moving to the left and I'm not moving up or down. Since our radius is one, that means that I'm moving to the left one and our y value there has to be zero because I'm not moving up or down. So if I'm doing sine of pi, I know sine is equal to the y value, so it would be zero. Cosine of pi is equal to the x value, so that would be negative one. And tangent of pi is equal to y over x, which would be zero over negative one or zero. Cosecant of pi, the reciprocal of zero puts zero in the denominator. We know we cannot divide by zero, so we would write that this is undefined. Secant of pi, the reciprocal of negative one is negative one. And the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent, the reciprocal of zero is undefined. Okay, so the reason why I wanted us to star this is this is the type of angle that regardless of what our favorite method is, we are going to use this way in order to figure out those values. Okay, last but not least, we have t equals negative pi over 3. If I look back, and if I have this memorized, pi over 3 is an ordered pair of 1 half radical 3 over 2. Now, I know pi over 3 would be in quadrant 4, because I'm sorry, it's negative pi over 3. I know in, a na in quadrant 4, that means we're moving to the right and down. So that means that my x value will be positive and my y value will be negative. So my ordered pair in this case is 1 half negative radical 3 over 2. So if I'm finding all these values, sine of negative pi over 3, we know sine is the y value, so I have negative radical 3 over 2. Cosine of negative pi over 3. I know cosine is the x value, so it would be 1 half. Tangent of negative pi over 3. If I have negative radical 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, I end up getting negative radical 3. So now if we do all the reciprocals, cosecant of negative pi over 3 would be the reciprocal of negative 2 over radical 3, which would be negative 2 radical 3 over 3. The secant of negative pi over 3 would be the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2. And the cotangent, just writing something weird there, the cotangent of negative pi over 3 would be the reciprocal of negative radical 3, which is negative radical 3 over 3. So the whole thing for us to remember is that we really need to have these three ordered pairs memorized, and we need to know what sine, cosine, and tangent are, are all equal to, because we know what the reciprocals are. Okay, so that's what it comes down to. We need to have those things memorized.